Chapter number one: The Living World. How wonderful is the living world? The wide range of living types is amazing. The extraordinary habitats in which we find living organisms, be it cold mountainous, deciduous forest, ocean, freshwater lake, desert, or hot spring, leave us speechless. The beauty of a galloping horse. of the migrating birds the value of flowers or the attacking sark evokes o oh, and a deep sense of wonder the ecological conflict and cooperation among members of a population and among populations of community or even the molecular traffic inside a cell make us deeply reflect on what indeed is life this question has two implicit questions within it The first is a technical one and seeks answer to what living is as opposed to the non-living and the second is a philosophical one and seeks answer to what the purpose of life is as scientists we shall not attempt answering the second question we will try to reflect on what is living 1.1 what is living when we try to define living we conventionally look for distinctive characteristics exhibited by living organisms growth reproduction ability to sense environment and mount a suitable response come to our mind immediately as unique feature of living organism one can add a few more features like metabolism ability to self replicate self organize in direct and emergence to this list let us try to understand each of this all living organisms grow increase in mass and increase in number of individuals are twin characteristics of growth a multicellular organism grows by cell division in plants this growth by cell division occurs continuously throughout their life span in animals this growth is seen only up to a certain age however cell division occurs in certain tissues to replace lost cells unicellular organism grow by cell division one can easily observe this in in vitro cultures by simply counting the number of cells under the microscope in majority of higher animals and plants growth and reproduction are mutually exclusive events one must remember that increase in body mass is considered as growth non living object also grow if we take increase in body mass as a criteria for growth mountains boulders and sand mounds to grow do grow however this kind of growth exhibited by non living objects is by accumulation of material on the surface in living organism growth is from inside growth therefore cannot be taken as a defining property of living organism conditions under which it can be observed in all living organisms have to be explained and then we understand that it is a characteristic of living systems a dead organism does not grow reproduction like phase is a characteristic of living organism in multicellular organism reproduction refers to the production of progeny possessing features more or less similar to those of parents invariably and implicitly we refer to sexual reproduction organism reproduce by asexual means also fungi multiply and spread easily due to the millions of asexual spores they produce in lower organisms like yeast and hydra we observe budding in planaria we observe true regeneration that is a fragmented organism regenerates the lost part of its body and becomes a new organism the fungi the filamentous algae the protonema of moses all easily multiply by fragmentation when it comes to unicellular organisms like bacteria unicellular alga or amoeba reproduction is synonyms with growth that is increase in number of cells we have already defined growth as equivalent to increase in cell number or mass hence we notice that in single cell organism we are not very clear about the usage of these two terms growth and reproduction further there are many organism which do not reproduce hence reproduction also cannot be an all inclusive defining characteristic of living organism 
ऑफ कोर्स नो नॉन लिविंग ऑब्जेक्ट इज कैपेबल ऑफ रिप्रोड्यूसिंग और रेप्लीकेटिंग बाय इट सेल्फ अनदर कैरेक्टरिस्टिक ऑफ लाइफ इज मेटाबॉलिज्म ऑल लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म आर मेड अप ऑफ केमिकल्स दिस केमिकल्स स्मॉल एंड बिग बिलोंगिंग टू वेरियस क्लासेस साइज फंक्शन एटसेट्रा आर कॉन्स्टेंटली बींग मेड एंड चेंज इन टू सम अदर बायोमोलिक्यूल्स दिस कन्वर्जन आर केमिकल रिएक्शन और मेटाबोलिक रिएक्शन देर आर थाउजेंड ऑफ मेटाबोलिक रिएक्शन अकरिंग साइमल्टेनियसली इन साइड ऑल लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम बी द यूनिसेल्युलर और मल्टी सेल्युलर ऑल प्लांट्स एनिमल्स फंगाई इन माइक्रोव एक्सिबिट मेटाबोलिज्म The sum total of all the chemical reactions occurring in our body is metabolism. No non-living object exhibits metabolism. Metabolic reactions can be demonstrated outside the body in cell-free systems. An isolated metabolic reactions outside the body of an organism performed in a test tube is neither living or nor non-living. Hence, while metabolism is defining feature of all living organisms without exception isolated metabolic reactions in vitro are not living things but surely re- living reactions hence cellular organization of the body is the defining feature of life forms perhaps the most obvious and technically complicated feature of all living organism is this ability to sense their surroundings or environment and respond to this environmental stimuli which could be physical chemical or biological we sense our environment through our sense organs plants respond to external factors like light water temperature other organisms pollutants etc all organisms from the prokaryotes to the most complex eukaryotes can sense and respond to environmental cues photo period affects reproduction in seasonal breeders both plants and animals all organisms handle chemicals entering their bodies all organisms therefore are aware of their surroundings human being is the only organism who is aware of himself that is has self consciousness consciousness therefore becomes the defining property of living organisms when it comes to human beings it is all the more difficult to define the living state we observe patients lying in coma in hospitals virtually supported by machines which replace heart and lungs the patient is otherwise brain dead the patient has no self consciousness are such patients who never come back to normal life living or non living in higher classes you will come to know that all living phenomena are due to underlying interactions properties of tissues are not present in the constituent cells but arise as the result of interactions among the constituent cells similarly properties of cellular organelles are not present in the molecular constituent of the organelle but arise as the result of interactions among the molecular components comprising the organelle these interactions result in emergent properties at a higher level of organization This phenomenon is true in the hierarchy of organizational complexity at all levels. Therefore we can say that living organisms are self-replicating, evolving and self-regulating interactive system capable of responding to external stimuli. Biology is the story of life on earth. Biology is the story of evolution of living organism on the earth. all living organism present past and future are linked to one another by the sharing of the common genetic material but to varying degrees 1.2 diversity in the living world if you look around you will see a large variety of living organism be it potted plants insects birds eupods or other animals and plants There are also several organisms that you cannot see with your naked eye but they are all around you. If you were to increase the area that you make observations in, the range and variety of organisms that you see would increase. Obviously, if you were to visit a dense forest, you would probably see a much greater number and kinds of living organisms in it. Each different kind of plant, animal or organism that you see represent a species 
the number of species that are known and described range between 1.7 to 1.8 million this refers to biodiversity or the number or the number in types of organisms present on earth we should remember here that as we explore new areas and even old ones new organisms are continuously being identified as stated earlier there are millions of plants and animals in the world we know the plants and animals in our own area by their local names these local names would vary from place to place even within a country probably you would recognize the confusion that would be created if we did not find ways and means to talk to each other to refer to organisms we are talking about hence there is a need to standardize the naming of living organism such that a particular organism is known by the same name all over the world this process is called nomenclature obviously nomenclature or naming is only possible when the organism is described correctly and we know to what organism the name is attached to this is identification in order to facilitate the study number of scientists have established procedures to assign a scientific name to each known organism this is acceptable to biologists all over the world for plants scientific names are based on agreed principles and criteria which are provided in international code for botanical nomenclature in bracket icbn you may ask how are animals named animal taxonomist have evolved international code for zoological nomenclature in bracket iczn the scientific names ensure that each organism has only one name description of any organism should enable the people to arrive at the same name they also ensure that such a name has not been used for any other known organism biologists follow universally accepted principles to provide scientific scientific names to known organisms each name has two component the generic name and the specific epithet the system of providing a name with two components is called binomial nomenclature this naming system given by carolus linnaeus is being practiced by biologists all over the world this naming system using a two word format was found convenient let us take the example of mango to understand the way of providing scientific names better the scientific name of mango is written as mangifera indica let us see how it is a binomial name in this name mangifera represent the genus while indica is a particular species or a specific epithet other universal rules of nomenclature are as follows first biological names are generally in latin and written in italics they are latinized or derived from latin irrespective of their origin second the first word in a biological name represent the genus while the second component denote the specific epithet third both the words in a biological name when handwritten are separately underlined or printed in italics to indicate the latin origin fourth the first word denoting the genus starts with a capital letter while the specific epithet starts with a small letter it can be illustrated with the example of mangifera indica name of the author appears after the specific epithet that is at the end of the biological name and is written in an abbreviated form that is mangifera indica lean it indicates that this species was first described by linnaeus since it is nearly impossible to study all the living organism it is necessary to devise some means to make this possible this process 
is classification classification is the process by which anything is grouped into convenient categories based on some easily observable characters for example we easily recognize groups such as plants or animals or dogs cats or insects the moment we use any of these terms we associate certain characters with the organism in that group what image do you see when you think of a dog obviously each one of us will see dogs and not cats now if you were to think of assertions we know that we are talking about similarly suppose we were to say mammals you would of course think of animals with external ears and body hair likewise in plants if we try to talk of wheat the picture in each of our mind will be of wheat plants not of rice or any other plant hence all these dogs cats mammals wheat rice plants animals etc are convenient categories we use to study organisms the scientific term for this categories is taxa here you must recognize that taxa can indicate categories at very different levels plants also form a taxa wheat is also a taxa similarly animals mammals dogs are all taxa but you know that a dog is a mammal and mammals are animals therefore animals mammals and dogs represent taxa at different levels hence based on characteristics all living organism can be classified into different taxa this process of classification is taxonomy external and internal structure along with the structure of cell development process and ecological information of organisms are essential and form the basis of modern taxonomic studies hence characterization identification classification and nomenclature are the processes that are basic to taxonomy taxonomy is not something new human beings have always been interested in knowing more and more about the various kinds of organisms particularly with reference to their own use in early days human beings needed to find sources for their basic needs of food clothing and shelter hence the earliest classifications were based on the uses of various organisms human beings were since long not only interested in knowing more about different kinds of organisms and their diversities but also the relationship among them this branch of study was referred to as systematics the word systematics is derived from the latin word systema which means systematic arrangement of organism linnaeus used systema nature as the title of his publication the scope of systematics was later enlarged to include identification nomenclature and classification systematics takes into account evolutionary relationship between organisms 1.3 taxonomic categories classification is not a single step process but involves hierarchy of steps in which each step represent a rank or category since the category is a part of overall taxonomic arrangement it is called the taxonomic category and all categories together constitute the taxonomic hierarchy each category referred to as a unit of classification in fact represent a rank and is commonly termed as taxon taxonomic categories and hierarchy can be illustrated by an example insect represent a group of organisms sharing common features like three pairs of joint legs it means insect are recognizable concrete object which can be classified and thus were given a rank or category can you name other such groups of organisms remember groups represent category category further denotes rank each rank or taxon in fact represent a unit of classification these taxonomic groups or categories are distinct biological entities and not merely morphological aggregates taxonomical studies of all known organisms have led to the development of common categories such as kingdom phylum or division class order family genus and species all organisms including those in the plant and animal kingdoms have species as the lowest category now the question you may ask is 
how to place an organism in various categories the basic requirement is the knowledge of characters of an individual or group of organisms this help in identifying similarities and dissimilarities among the individuals of the same kind of organisms as well as the as well as of other kinds of organisms 1.3.1 species taxonomic studies consider a group of individual organisms with fundamental similarities as a species one should be able to distinguish one species from the other closely related species based on the distinct morphological differences let us consider mangifera indica solanum tubo tuberosum in bracket potato and panthera leo in bracket lion all the three names indica tuberosum and leo represent the specific epithets while the first word mangifera solanum and panthera are genera and represent another higher level of exon or category each genus may have one or more than one specific epithets representing different organisms but having morphological similarities for example panthera has another specific epithet called tigris and solanum includes species like nigra and melino and melongena human beings belong to the species sapiens which is grouped in the genus homo the scientific name thus for the human being is written as homo sapiens 1.3.2 genus genus comprises a group of related species which has more characters in common in comparison to species of other genera we can say that genera are aggregates of closely related species for example potato and brinjal are two different species but both belong to the genus solanum lion leopard and tiger with several common features are all species of the genus panthera this genus differs from another genus felis which includes cats 1.3.3 family the next category family has a group of related genera with still less number of similarities as compared to genus and species families are characterized on the basis of both vegetative and reproductive features of plant species among plants for example three different genera solanum petunia and datura are placed in the family solanaceae among animals for example genus panthera comprising lion tiger leopard is put along with genus felis in bracket cats in the family felidae similarly if you observe the features of a cat and a dog you will find some similarities and some differences as well they are separated into two different families felidae and canidae respectively One point three point four order. You have seen earlier that categories like species, genus, and families are based on a number of similar characters. Generally, order and other higher taxonomic categories are identified based on the aggregates of characters. Order being a higher category is the assemblage of families which exhibit a few similar characters. The similar characters are less in number. as compared to different genera included in a family plant families like convolu bulbalsi solanaceae are included in the order polymonials mainly based on the floral characters the animal order carnivora includes families like felidae and canidae 1.3.4 class This category includes related orders. For example, order Primata comprising monkey, gorilla, and gibbon is placed in a class Mammalia along with order Carnivora that includes animals like tiger, cat, and dog. Class Mammalia has other orders also. One point three point six Phylum. classes comprising animals like fishes amphibians reptiles birds along with mammals constitute the next higher category called phylum all this based on the common features like presence of notochord and dorsal holoneural system are included in phylum codata 
In case of plants, classes with a few similar characters are assigned to a higher category called division. 1.3.7 Kingdom All animals belonging to various phyla are assigned to the highest category called kingdom. Animalia in the classification system of animals. The kingdom plantae, on the other hand, is distinct and comprises all plants from various divisions. Henceforth, we will refer to these two groups as animal and plant kingdoms. The taxonomic categories from species to kingdom have been shown in ascending order starting with species in figure 1.1. These are brood categories. However, taxonomists have also developed subcategories in this hierarchy to facilitate more sound and scientific placement of various taxa. Look at the hierarchy in figure 1.1. Can you recall the basis of arrangement? See for example, as we go higher from species to kingdom, the number of common characteristics goes on decreasing. Lower the taxa, more are the characteristics that are members within the taxon share. Higher the category, greater is the difficulty of determining the relationship to other taxa at the same level. Hence, the problem of classification becomes more complex. Table 1.1 indicates the taxonomic categories to which some common organisms like housefly, man, mango and wheat belong. 1.4 Taxonomical Age Taxonomic studies of various species of plants, animals and other organisms are useful in agriculture, forestry, industry and in general in knowing our bioresources and their diversity. The studies would require correct classification and identification of organisms. Identification of organisms requires intensive laboratory and field studies. The collection of actual specimens of plants and animal species is essential and is the prime source of taxonomic studies. These are also fundamental to studies and essential for training in systematics. It is used for classification of an organism and the information gathered is also stored along with the specimens. In some cases, the specimen is preserved for future studies. Biologists have established certain procedures and techniques to store and preserve the information as well as the specimens. Some of these are explained to help you understand the usage of this aids. 1.4.1 Herbarium Herbarium is a storehouse of collected plant specimens that are dried, pressed and preserved on sheets. Further, these seeds are arranged according to a universally accepted system of classification. These specimens along with the descriptions on herbarium seeds become a storehouse or repository for future use. The herbarium seeds also carry a label providing information about date and place of collection, English, local and botanical names, family, collector's name, etc. Herbaria also serve as quick referral systems in taxonomical studies. 1.4.2 Botanical Gardens These specialized gardens have collections of living plants for reference. Plant species in these gardens are grown for identification purpose and each plant is labeled indicating its botanical or scientific name and its family. The famous botanical gardens are at Kew in Bracket, England, Indian Botanical Garden, Havra in Bracket, India and at National Botanical Resource Institute, Lucknow, India. 1.4.3 Museum Biological museums are generally set up in educational institutes such as schools and colleges. Museums have collections of preserved plant and animal specimens for study and reference. Specimens are preserved in the containers of jars in preservative solutions. Plants and animal specimens may also be preserved as dry specimens. Insects are preserved in insect box after collecting, killing and pinning. Larger animals like birds and mammals are usually stuffed and preserved. Museums often have collections of skeletons of animals too. 1.4.4 Zoological Parks These are the places where wild animals are kept in protected environments under human care and which enable us to learn about their food habits and behavior. All animals in a zoo are provided as far as possible 
the conditions similar to the natural habitats children love visiting these parks commonly called zoos 1.4.5 key key is the another taxonomical aid used for identification of plants and animals based on the similarities and dissimilarities the keys are based on the contrasting characters generally in a pair called couplate it represent the choice made between two opposite options this results in acceptance of only one and rejection of the other each statement in the key is called a lead separate taxonomic keys are required for each taxonomic category such as family genus and species for identification purposes keys are generally analytical in nature flora manuals monographs and catalogs are some other means of recording description they also help in correct identification flora contains the actual account of habitat and distribution of plants of a given area this provide the index to the plant species found in a particular area manuals are useful in providing information for identification of names of species found in an area monographs contain information on any one text zone